I actually didn't like it. <laughs> the new keyboard. Oh my goodness me, this new keyboard. I did find myself relating to the rap. Are doing a little weekend readathon that is inspired by cozy fantasy books because I seem to have been just collecting these and adding them to my shelves without actually reading them and I've got no idea if the cozy fantasy vibe is something that I actually enjoy reading about because they're quite often described as being fun, light-hearted and I don't typically like that in a book so while I do like the cozy fantasy vibes I've just always been intrigued about whether cozy fantasy books would work for me so myself and my patrons are doing a little cozy fantasy inspired weekend readathon and we are using it to channel all of the coziest of vibes so we are going to coffee shops we are drinking copious amounts of warm drinks eating all of the pastries we can we are only being lit by candlelight and fairy lights we are doing everything possible to have for the coziest weekend and so currently we are doing reading sprints and i am starting legends and letters by travis baldry which is like the one book that is automatically associated with 
the cozy fantasy vibe and I haven't read it yet so now is the time so in this book we are following an orc who used to fight in battles and live a very dangerous life but she has retired and she wants to run a coffee shop and we're just following her process of setting up this coffee shop in a fantasy world and all of the stories that she hears from her patrons at this coffee shop so I am just really hoping that I fall in love with this as much as everybody else seems to have done but this is my first book on the agenda for this weekend and I currently have all of my cozy lighting I've got a candle lit my desk setup is so cozy I did recently just have a little bit of a refresh of it so I'm surrounded by plants and I have my coffee I have snacks I've also got my Nintendo switch so that I can play some cozy games and just waiting for that to charge before I can listen to an audiobook start playing games and see how the cozy vibes go this weekend I am so excited for this and also it has been so heartwarming because my patrons so many of them have been showing me photos of them also going to coffee shops to read today and it's just been so cute seeing everyone do that <laughs> the way that so many people have actually gone out and just read in a coffee shop because I was like wouldn't that be a cool idea and apparently you all agreed <laughs> so I honestly started to well up while I was in the coffee shop this morning because I was like this is so wholesome I can't believe we're all doing this just because I said hey let's do this fun thing it's, it's too cute it's too cute so we're starting the cozy vibes off well I have of course already consumed one cinnamon bun today and I plan to continue consuming all the good things throughout the rest of the weekend <laughs> It is now Sunday and I spent I think about seven and a half hours doing reading sprints yesterday so the readathon has been readathoning and I did in fact finish reading Legends and Lattes so I uh, actually didn't like it <laughs> and to be honest I didn't know what I would think of it I don't know this readathon is a little bit of an experiment on my part because I don't know if I would actually enjoy the cozy fantasy vibe that seems to have become a thing because while I love cozy vibes I think when it comes to the books I read I need there to be more happening for me to become invested which is exactly what happened with Legends and Lattes so while I can see why 
other people may enjoy this book and I do understand the whole like low stakes fantasy vibe that you would get from it. I think for me, because I'm so character driven, I need there to be more at stake for the characters for me to become invested, which might make me sound kind of like a cruel person because I'm like, I don't care unless you are nearly dying. <laughs> but I don't know, it's not even that, it's just... I think being put into, let's say, interesting situations just automatically means that you are going to see somebody's way of dealing with problems a lot easier than you will just in a low stakes fantasy. So I put it this way, I wouldn't read a book about somebody opening up a coffee shop because that's just not my vibe. I don't want to read about everyday life. I promise these are the same colour, it's just the lighting. <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't read about some random person opening up a coffee shop and apparently that applies to walks as well, which is literally what I said in my Goodreads review. I think just this sort of slice of life situation is not something that's going to work for me. I need there to be more happening and I don't think it helps as well that I don't like reading about food. <laughs> I know that that is a big thing for a lot of people. A lot of people really love reading about food and how much people can love food and while I did like it to an extent in this book it was kind of just something that put me off so every time I hear people say oh make sure you've got snacks nearby when you're reading this one because it'll make you hungry I'm just automatically put off by the book because I don't know I just food is not something I care to read about I can't explain it it's just something that instantly bores me and a lot of this book is them discovering new food or <laughs> new food within this fantasy realm at least so talking about cinnamon buns and all these pastries that are coming up and different types of coffee and people trying it and being hesitant and you know coming around to liking these pastries and then feeling revolutionary while i respect that because i too think cinnamon buns are revolutionary <laughs> um do i want to read over and over again all these different people discovering cinnamon buns not particularly because i've already discovered them so <laughs> Is that really selfish of me? Like, I don't care if random book characters discover cinnamon buns for the first time because I've discovered them already. Probably. I think there is just an inherent sort of disconnect I'm wanting when it comes to the books I choose to read. There's a reason why I don't read contemporary fiction all too often because more often than not, if I'm going into a book, I want to read about things that I can't relate to. <laughs> That's the reason why I go to books. I don't want to relate to them so I had this when it came to reading about people in university while I was in university like people would recommend me books with main characters going to university and I just wouldn't like them because I'm like this is too close to my own life and don't get me wrong with Legends and Lattes I can't say it's overly similar because uh when I go to the local coffee shop I'm not served by an orc for one um I mean maybe I am Maybe they've just got really good disguises. The rest of it is just what I do on a weekend, so why would I read about someone else doing it when I can just go and do it, you know? I will say though, it did add like a level of <laughs> um, immersion reading Legends and Lattes in the coffee shop yesterday. But I think as well, because I didn't find anything overly spectacular about the writing or the characters, I didn't find myself rooting for the characters, I didn't care for any of the relationships. I did find myself relating to the rap, <laughs> which, I don't know how I feel about that. There's this little rat of a character who is their chef and he gets so excited about cinnamon buns and he drinks his coffee away in lattes, which me too. <laughs> so the fact that I could relate to the rat of all characters um, says probably a lot about me. Again, I can see why people love this book. It's very charming and quaint, I would say, but I don't do charming and quaint. And that is fully like a this book is just not made for me situation it's not me saying this book is absolutely terrible but just in terms of who i am as a reader it's not for me i am the problem here <laughs> and i think that has surprised a lot of people because obviously i do like the the cozy fantasy vibes like that is what i aim for on a daily basis but i just like i said i don't like reading about things that are too close to my own life so i don't <laughs> Even when it comes to like contemporary romances and such, it has to be so far removed from what I experience that I just can't relate to it and therefore it almost is a fantasy within a contemporary world. But yeah, this one wasn't for me I'm afraid. For today though, so we are going to be doing sprints again this afternoon. It's currently around 11am. 
it did take me a little while to get out of bed i was far too comfortable this morning but i am actually about to get back in bed and read for a little bit because i think i'm going to choose out some manga to read and have a little bit of a sit down read that there's one manga in particular which i know i want to read because it's got a really long-winded title so i never remember what it's called but it would be perfect for this sort of cozy vibe that we've got going this weekend so i'm gonna read that have something to eat and then once i am done with that i think i will move on to listening to the audiobook of the house witch which i'll go into a little bit more later on but the reason why i want to audiobook that is because i want to get some chores done i have some washing to put away i want to wash more clothes i want to vacuum and do some general stuff like that have a little bit of a sunday reset moment so i'll do all that while listening to an audiobook and i'm kind of hoping i can finish that entire book today but we'll see because i have gotten off to a bit of a late start <laughs> Hello my loves, so we have some weird lighting going on but I wanted to update you on quite a few things actually. I have many a thing to talk about because it is a few days after the little readathon that we did on my Patreon and honestly I <laughs> was kind of just proven right with my theory that while I like cozy fantasy in theory I wouldn't necessarily love it to read because when it comes to fantasy books i need there to be more action in it than i think a cozy fantasy would typically provide so i obviously didn't get along overly well with legends and lattes but i did then pick up the house witch 
by Dallum Hatch or it does say Emily Nakota. I don't know which name they prefer to go by, but this Dallum Hatch one is the one that seems to be on all of the the books so we'll go with that but I picked this one up because it seems like Legends and Lattes but with maybe just a little bit more plot. In this one we are following a man called Finley who is working within the royal household as a cook and he is a witch but he doesn't want anyone to know he's a witch because that typically brings problems and so he's trying to keep it quiet but he's not doing a very good job at it and so we're just following like the random little dramas of this royal household that he gets pulled into just because he's a witch and I rated this three stars. Now this, I had very similar vibes to Legends and Lattes, like they are just two books which give me very similar cozy vibes which is exactly what I was looking for from this weekend but this one has more plot so if you want Legends and Lattes vibes but with more of a storyline then I would go with this one because it is longer but also I think just the dramas of a household can be the sort of dramas that are small enough to be not too stressful to follow if you are looking for something that's just light-hearted a kind of easy breezy sort of read but it's not too low-key to be boring <laughs> so there is enough sort of scandal and gossip going on that it gives you something to follow. I also just generally liked the characters more in this. I think there was more time to actually get to know them, get to know their place within this household and it's the sort of royal household where everyone is kind of nice within reason but like even the royal family are a family that you want to root for and it does just have this kind of wholesome energy surrounding it and so I do think it was very nice. I think that if you are looking for that sort of slower pace, lighthearted read, then this could be one for you. I don't think I'm going to continue with the series because I can't say I was overly invested. And there does seem to be quite a few of them. There's like three more on the back. So I don't think I'm that invested. And I think I'm actually going to gift this to a friend who I think will really enjoy it. So yeah, it's three stars. It was better than Legends and Lattes, but not one that I was overly invested in. And I did also pick up a couple of manga. So first up we have this one which I never for the life of me remember the book title of but it's called The Saviour's Book Cafe Story in Another World. <laughs> and this is by Kyoko Izumi. No it's not, it's based on the novels by Kyoko Izumi. The story is by Umaya and the art is by Reiko Sakurada. So a few different people involved with this one but this is quite literally like Legends and Lattes or maybe even Bookshops and Bone Dust. I haven't read that one yet but this is just following a 30 a 30 something year old office worker who is told that she is the savior of this other world and she needs to go and save it and she's just like nah that doesn't sound like my sort of thing and then this god's just like what do you mean you can't just say no and she's like but I'm 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 not going to do anything like I'm not good at this. And he's like, fine, well, I need to send you anyway, so you're gonna go. And she basically agrees to go on the condition that she can open up a bookshop cafe, and that is exactly what she does. And we just follow her opening up this bookshop cafe in a fantasy world, trying very hard not to be the saviour, and yet somehow getting involved nonetheless. Now, this one, with it being volume one, is very very low stakes there is very little that happens within this book because you don't quite get to the part where she gets pulled into all of the the problems so you do quite literally just see her setting up shop and flirting with this guy <laughs> and honestly it was what i was looking for again the cozy fantasy vibes you see her being given this like huge array of magic and she uses it for really wholesome reasons like healing people or warming people up, putting little protection spells around her bookshops and looking after the books through magic as well. And everyone's just like, she has so much power and yet she's using it on these really random things. <laughs> and so you are just following her story and I do think that when it comes to cozy fantasy stories, if I am to continue consuming them, then I probably will do it through manga because it's not that long for me to like dip in, have my little wholesome moment and then dip back out again and not really spend too much time within it. So I think this is the format that works better for me for this type of story and I did really enjoy it. Again, I still rated it three stars. It's not something that I'm overly obsessed with, but I do think that generally that was more to do with how short this was the fact that there wasn't too much story or plot within this one volume. So I would be more inclined to continue this than I would this for instance so that i may very well do if only for 
however this is because i am intrigued <laughs> and then because i was really in the mood to watch something like studio ghibli or something based off a makoto shinkai novel but i was a bit too restless to just sit down and watch a film so i actually ended up picking up your name volume one which is the manga that the film is based off actually i don't know which way around they came it says that the original story is by makoto shinkai i don't know if there's a novel version of this because i've got another makoto shinkai novel Shin Her Cat, which is one of my favourite things to have read. And I do want to read all of Makoto Shinkai's stories because they are just so <laughs> heartwarming. Like every single one that I've read has been a f It's really tugged at my emotions. So I have watched the anime film of Your Name and absolutely adored it. I have not met a single person who has not adored it. And I am very much one of them. <laughs> and Your Name is one that I really, really enjoyed the movie of. So I wanted to pick up the manga and just sort of revisit it and that is exactly what i did so this is the story of these two people who switch bodies they quite literally wake up one day in someone else's body and they're just like what the hell is going on and so they have to figure out what is going on i didn't actually realize i should have done based on how short this is but i didn't realize that this wasn't the full story that you see in the movie so i have kind of just finished halfway through the story so I need to find volume two and however many there are, there might just be two. But I do need to find that so that I can actually continue the read of it. But I rated this four stars. I love the story so much. And I think that it's the sort of, I don't know, it's the sort of story that brings out so many emotions because of the film. Like I don't think I would have loved this story quite as much as I do if had I not seen the film first so I would recommend actually watching it before you read the manga. One thing I will say though is that the manga is spot on so again I don't know which way around they came but hang on I do have. I just went through a whole moment where I was like let me google it and then realised that I'm filming on my phone and I was like oh I can't and then I realised I'm sat at my computer as if that's not a whole machine that can be used. <laughs> well the director is Makoto Shinkai. I thought it was and I got confused because it says that the original stories by them so I just assumed they were an author. So that came out in 2016 so the manga must have come after then. Oh they both came out in 2016. Do you know what? Figure it out yourself. <laughs> Either way Makoto Shinkai is the the creator of this story and I love it so I was very happy to revisit that and that is it for my little cozy reading moment. I did start playing Coffee Talk on my Switch, which by the way, I've been having such a tech moment as well because Tech Talk got me. Not TikTok, not Book Talk, Tech Talk. Both in terms of Nintendo Switch cases, because I've never had a, a case for my Switch before because I've only ever seen the like vinyl ones that you actually stick to them. And I don't like the thought of those, it stresses me out. So I saw these and it is quite literally like just a case that you put over it. And I was like, I need that and I saw I saw this one and I really am having like a Studio Ghibli moment so I got the case I got the case and so this is the back of it like I've just shown you but on the front as well I've got these little like Totoro thumb grips which I'm not really doing a great job showing <laughs> but they're just so cute and it's already like so much more comfortable to actually hold because it's not just a giant slip and slide anyway besides the point i tried playing coffee talk because i swear i have a theory a conspiracy theory if you will that travis baldry who wrote legends and lattes took inspiration from the game coffee talk because that game came out before legends and lattes he used to work in the video game industry and there is i oh my goodness one of the characters within coffee talk looks exactly like the artwork from the original cover or the inside cover of Legends and Lattes, like they are the same character. And Coffee Talk is quite literally just you running a coffee shop with like fantasy characters coming in and telling you their stories and then you make them coffee and, and that is the game. And I'm just like, this is just Legends and Lattes in game form. So I thought, oh, it'd be really fun to, to play it. But that actually backfired. It didn't really work out because the game Coffee Talk is such a narrative based game. I couldn't listen to an audiobook while playing the game, which is what I usually do. So I actually had to put Coffee Talk down and I'll probably revisit that when I do just feel like focusing on the one thing, which isn't very often, honestly. I am a multitasker at heart. My brain only ever functions on multitasking. If I'm given just the one task, then I tend to daydream because I it's just not filling my brain enough. So 
doesn't happen very often but maybe at some point when I'm experiencing burnout and just need to focus on one thing is when I'll return to that game but I ended up instead because I've been trying to find a new game to like get into. I am very much a person who latches onto games and I will play the same game over and over and over again until I get bored of it but it can take months and that has been Dreamlight Valley for a long time but I've kind of I've had my fill of it now I've had my fill so I was looking for something else and I wanted a new sort of cozy game to play and a little while ago I ended up getting Palia which is originally a PC game but you can now get it on Switch and I will say it is a little bit glitchy on Switch but it's not something that overly bothers me because it's not too bad as long as you've got a good Wi-Fi connection but Palia is pretty similar to Dreamlight Valley in that you just go around you're given little tasks to like collect materials level up your characters and stuff like that build a house farm things it's just one of those very easy breezy games where you just go around fulfilling these little tasks there's no fighting or anything as far as i've discovered anyway <laughs> but i am so thoroughly obsessed with it now like this is going to be my thing for a long time i can tell so i'm so happy to have finally latched onto something i felt a bit adrift for a while i didn't know what to do with myself so very happy to have clung on to a new game and it's just this really beautiful fantasy world where you are just going around as like the only human in this world and everybody's just baffled by who you are and where you've come from and this world is so fun to explore as well it's so beautiful and it seems pretty huge as well like i have been wandering around gallivanting around this place for a good old time now and i still have so many places to unlock so i'm very excited to actually discover more of that and i think this may mean that I'm going to be in an audiobook phase for a while because all I want to do is play Palia now. It's funny because I do tend to, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'll download a game, look at it, become entirely disinterested for a good amount of amount of time. So I'll just not think of that game for months and months and months and then one day I'll go back on it and all of a sudden that is my personality. Like... <laughs> it has happened every single time and I don't know why but it's like I need to come to terms with the fact that I won't understand anything about the game first but yeah so Palia is my is my thing at the moment but also just generally like anything to do with tech at the minute if I had the ability to change my desk I can't just because it's the table that came with the flat so I have to keep it but if I had the ability to change my desk I would have done very recently <laughs> because I keep seeing all these beautiful desk setups and I, I want one and to be fair, I do actually really like my desk right now. It is very, it just feels alive. Like my plants, I got some new plants and now that I'm surrounded by plants again, I've got some fairy lights everywhere and a new keyboard. Oh my goodness me, this new keyboard is my entire heart and soul. I love it so much, so, so much. I have used this little Apple keyboard that's thin as anything since i got this mac i think a year or two ago and that's fine it it does the job it's perfectly fine it's not an ugly looking keyboard it's it's fine <laughs> like i said i got onto tech talk and ooh, all of those really satisfying asmr style typing videos came up and there was just one keyboard that i got my heart set on and that was the lofry dot liquid foundation keyboard and that is what i've ended up buying because for one it's the first one i've seen that seems to easily connect to mac a lot of them you have to like reformat to be able to work for a Mac computer and I just don't have the patience for that. But it lights up when I type or I can make it like glow and look all magical and it's such a satisfying noise and because I work from home I'm just like if I can make my desk set up something that I genuinely love then I'm just not ever going to be unhappy when it comes to working. I mean I love my job and I did previously like my desk setup but now I've just like leveled up for the game i am so pleased and now i just want to type all the time <laughs> i just i want to get things done like i've got a renewed sense of motivation just because i want to use this keyboard <laughs> it is so satisfying i cannot stop using it it's so good it's made me so happy and yeah it's definitely a difference from all of the really flat unsatisfying keyboards that i've been using because i've always had like a macbook or a Mac computer and so my keyboards have always been the same really flat ones. I did briefly try like a typewriter one and I absolutely love it but I just 
it wasn't very practical for what I was using but I didn't actually end up using it all too often and I pretty much just use it as a prop now for my Instagram photos and stuff but this one I absolutely adore it like I am already using it and getting used to it it is taking a little bit of getting used to just because I have used a very flat keyboard for a very long time but it's such a comfortable keyboard as well I just I am so obsessed I never thought I would be that person who is reviewing a keyboard online but here we are <laughs> I do feel very magical while typing though, just because everything does light up as I type. I love it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop chatting your ear off about keyboards <laughs> of all things and I'm gonna let you go, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far into the video, then leave a coffee down below the emoji, not the donation thing. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna love you and leave you and I will chat to you again very, very soon. Goodbye.